G'day viewers. All right, just at another property doing some uh, a check on a solar system that seems to be underperforming for a client who's just bought this house. And um, the installers that have installed this system have made some real sort of um, not ideal decisions. The first one is the inverter is installed facing north with no shake whatsoever. Um, so it gets full sun it's a cloudy overcast day at the moment but it's still in the sun so in summer this thing would be absolutely cooking now there isn't an inverter on the market that i know of that can be installed in direct sunlight none so if your installer puts your inverter in direct sunlight that's that's a fundamental flaw you've you've voided your warranty so make sure they don't do that um, and if you purchase a property where it is in the sun and it can't be avoided, then buy an awning or an annex or something to put some shade on it. Now, the other thing I've just found is um, I've got voltage on this string, but nothing on this one. So I'm gonna have a look at what's going on there and see why not. Right, so I found that problem. As you can see, water has been getting in the DC isolator. You can see the rust marks there. The DC isolator has expanded there. Um, and again, this comes down to two things actually. Uh, putting these isolators in a spot where they're exposed to the sun and the weather. So the sun's probably distorted this, although they should be rated to be out in the sun, but not always. Um, but the main thing is here is how they've installed this gland. They've used a, a single hole gland like this one instead of a multi-hole gland insert. So the rain has simply gone straight in, dripped on there and stuffed the isolator. Um, new regulations don't permit any cable entries to come out of the top of the DC isolator uh, for this very reason, because some tradesmen, and I'll use that term very loosely, um, don't uh, understand how to um, comply with uh, installing such a, an isolator that's exposed to the weather in a way that it doesn't uh, get water ingress. Um, so that's a another fundamental flaw on the installer's behalf and again just a cheap shitty install. Um, I'm amazed this inverter is still working. You can see the screen's all cracked and it's copped to hiding. Um, but yeah that's, that's a credit to SunGrow there because that's been exposed to the weather for a very long time cooking away. Uh, in the Australian heat, so that's that's pretty impressive actually because I'd say this is about five years old or so um, So there we go. I'll replace that and uh, Hopefully that will uh, Bring this system back up to speed and we'll get them to install some kind of shade or something over the inverter and that will bring the um, performance back up as well um, as the inverters get hot it reduces the um, performance of the inverter. It'll ramp down to stop itself overheating. Righto, there we go, cheers. Righto, so what I've ended up doing here is because we've got a water ingress issue in here, if I put another DC isolator in there, uh, all that's gonna do is it's just gonna fail again. Because the way this has been installed, I, I, without a lot of stuffing around, I can't make that um, water resistant. So because there's still gonna be water going in it, I've used the proper MC4 connectors, uh, which is what we use up on the roof, um, and they're completely uh, water uh, rated, and so we won't have any issues there. I'm not sure what the actual IP rating is, um, but we're not gonna have any further issues. I'll put the cover back on, the marker is not in use. We've got a DC isolator on the inverter, so it still complies. And um, what this particular client's going to do is uh, get solar analytics installed and um, that way they've got some proper real data and uh, they can make some educated decisions on what they're going to do as far as upgrading the solar system and batteries uh, moving forward in the future. Alrighty, thanks for watching.